I don't, I don't think that right now we, we still think of this all-powerful, literally, medium of communication that you get information through. And I think the more that people start to see that it is an appliance, it is a larger screen size, it's not necessarily the medium that matters, it's the content that matters, the better off they're going to be in making their decisions on how to spend their advertising dollars or even what kind of content to create. Because really, as you're starting to see, a lot of people are shifting to cutting off cable television altogether and deciding to get all of their content on Online. So then it's just a matter of do I want the content at the size of my phone or at the size of my tablet or my desktop or a larger screen. So really the television becomes more of an appliance and less important as a medium. Yeah, I think that we, you know, we have this range of tools available now for people to take advantage of an internet based infrastructure. So IP stacks if it's FTP or you know, basically, you don't have to rely on the traditional means of getting video and audio and text back and forth across places. It used to be that newsrooms uh, would essentially wait for hours and hours for someone to bring, uh, or actually days, to bring a, a reel of film back from some faraway place. And here we have, you know, hundreds of examples of video from the protests in Egypt in almost real time hitting YouTube. So. You know, let's kind of think about how we refashion this. Again, it still takes time and it takes effort to verify what is a fact and what isn't. But there are technologies available today, and increasingly they're in our hands, or at least in the hands of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, that could be content creators for you. I think they're expecting their definition of what news is, the sort of newest information, much, much faster. But I think that they're expecting a level of analysis and depth at the same, if not greater than before, because they're, I think consumers are becoming acutely aware that I can find out that headline from an infinite number of sources that are regurgitating the Associated Press Wire or the Bloomberg Wire Service, right? So. That's not really the most important stuff, so that might come across my Twitter feed and I might already know it before I wait or I even go to a particular destination to try to verify that. So if I know that four or five institutions are all saying that there was an earthquake in San Francisco, I'm going to say most likely there was an earthquake in San Francisco. Now, later on, what happened, what were the pictures, not just the immediacy of it, but you know how significant was this impact, I think they want smarter information as well. And so for those things, perhaps they're subscribing to specific brands that they trust and that they know can deliver not just the, the hits, runs, and errors, but really the longer time horizon and the context of what happened. I think it's a great snapshot and radar screen for me of what else is happening out there from people that I'm curious about already. So, I mean, some people say, oh, it's RSS 2.0, you know, it's really not that new, it's just basically institutions pushing information out. But, you know, Twitter also allows me to geo sort of uh, target particular types of tweets that are coming from a specific area or, or from a group of people. So I can really have kind of a multi-dimensional look at a specific event or a specific um, uh, topic much, much faster, and I can actually find fairly intelligent sources that are commenting on a specific event or a topic faster than I could using the traditional way. I'm really looking forward to seeing how location-based tagging happens for news content. Um, I don't think that people have really explored that that much. I think Obviously, as uh, location-sensitive advertising, wherever those dollars go, um, you're going to see a lot of other content spring up around that. So that's kind of one vein that I, I'm just curious about, whether something happens or not. If there's a revenue stream attached to something, again, like if the advertisers are there, the content will follow. So if advertisers right now seem to be pretty excited about augmented reality, they seem to be pretty excited about you know trying to add a different layer of um, uh, interactivity to their message, and maybe the content that wraps around almost, it's, in, it's kind of an inverse model, right? It used to be that the advertising wrapped around the content. Maybe now it's the content that wraps around the sort of key ad.